What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 23rd Teak Hinter tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to add the next you know, massive chunk of code uh, to our animation function and this is going to basically allow us um, to handle pretty much everything else that we've thrown at our at our you know program thus far. So there's kind of two ways for me to do this. I can either do it line by line, or I could just, uh, you know, we could do it in like groups and show the different stuff. And I think what I'm going to do in this one, uh, chances are if you've made it to this far in the tutorial, uh, you're not needing uh, instant gratification uh, by any means. So I think what, what the best way for me to do this, uh, you know, this next block of code is to really just write it line by line. Uh, we're gonna have some functions again that, that don't actually do anything yet, and then we'll, we'll kind of add the coverage for those, but it's gonna take a, a, a decent amount of time to get through all of this. So, uh, at the end of this exception um, here, um, this exception is for tick data, right? So if data pays tick, we try, um, we try to do this. Now, that is um, really one, two, three paces over. Uh, so what we'll do is we come down here, way to the bottom, and then we go one, two, three, and we have else. So what if the data is not tick data? Um, luckily, we can kind of uh, handle this just based on um, using the syntax API or the CFBTC API rather. Uh, and so that's what we're gonna we're gonna do. So <clears throat> else, and then we're gonna say if dat counter is greater than twelve. So what are we doing here? Um, the idea here is twelve is just the a magic number that I'm using. We're gonna we can probably change this down the road. We're just gonna throw in twelve for now. That's just what's in the code. Um, but if data dat counter does not equal is not greater than twelve, then we don't regenerate uh, data. So um, let me scroll down uh, to the very very bottom here. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we won't actually refresh our, our graph, so to speak, and we're not going to pull data because the one of the larger sucks of, of data and processing is redrawing the graph as well as um, uh, pulling new data. So we can make um, an the animation function. We can force the animation function to run every second, right? We can do that. But the other, but what we can do is we can set that to run every second. But we simultaneously only in here, whoops, only in the animation function, um, <clears throat> we can set it down here with using our dat counter. Um, we can say, well, we only want it to run every 12 times, like every 12 seconds, basically, with 12. So that's kind of how we're doing it. Uh, what my idea is down the road is we can allow the user to say, I want this to update every minute or every five seconds, or one second. And the reason that's gonna matter is using the the, uh, the CFBDC API. So the general data is not gonna really matter, but if you wanna get like instant data, it's gonna cause quite the load to CFBDC and you will have to pay for that. But for lightweight data, um, or at least this kind of data, that's not really lightweight data, but for this kind of data, um, well, it'll be it'll still remain free, but anyway, eventually we'll let the user kind of decide how what kind of time frames uh, they want to use. For now, we're just going to say twelve. So, if dat counter is greater than twelve, what do we want to do? Well, we want to try as always, and then we're going to go ahead and just pre-write our accept. So, accept exception as e print string e, and actually before string e, let's go ahead and say. Uh, failed in the non-tick animate, okay? Now, try, what we're gonna try is, uh, Huobi uh, does vary just slightly between the other ones, but it won't be as big of a deal as, as it was with tick data, don't worry. So we're gonna say if exchange equals uh, Huobi or Huobi, I don't really know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Um, then we're gonna say uh, if the top indicator equal, or actually is not equal 
none, um, we're going to say, uh, man, I'm so itchy today. <laughs> A equals plt dot subplot to grid. And then again, uh, this is a six by, oops, a six by four. The starting point here uh, for this one is one and zero. And then row span is going to equal five, and col span will equal four. Uh, and then we'll just we'll take this copy, paste a two, uh, starting point zero zero, row span um, one, and then also we're going to share the axes here. So share x equals uh, a, um, and that's it for a and a two. Um, if else, right, if top indicator does equal none, then we take this right here, copy, paste, and 0, 0, and 6, 4. So what are we doing here? In this code, we're basically uh, you know, setting up the subplots. Uh, we're going to be doing the exact same thing for all the other exchanges. It just so happens with Huobi, uh, we don't have... Uh, the same, we're not going to have volume. So so that's why with Huobi, it's it's very specific. So um, with with this, uh, we're setting up basically the subplots before we actually start throwing stuff at it. But you're going to see with the other exchanges, we're going to have many subplots. So uh, let's go ahead and show that. So that was if exchange equals Huobi. So only for Huobi are we doing that. Otherwise, we're going to have um, some checks quite like this. So we'll take this right here, um, else, and then actually that was a, there's probably a space there. So else if top indicator does not equal none and bottom indicator uh, does not equal none, what do we want to do? Um, here, uh, the main graph is A, right? So A is going to be plt.sub plot to grid. The grid is, as usual, it will be a 6 by 4. The starting point, this is A is the main graph, so the starting point will be 1 down, right? Because if there's a subplot above it, it would start at 0, 0. So the starting point here will be 1, 0. Um, the row span here uh, will be 3, and then the call span here will be 4. Next, um, we're going to say, because this is basically if, if we're using both indicators so this also leaves a, a row right below it okay so <clears throat> and actually two because we have volume data and we have maybe an indicator possibly so now we're gonna say a2 and this will be our volume uh, equals this and let's go ahead so we don't have to you know retype a ton equals this exact same data uh, the start point for volume is actually four zero row span is going to be one coal span stays the same. So that's volume. Uh, now let's copy this, uh, paste it, and in fact, let's go ahead. I, I I commented this in my in my main code, and I'd like to go ahead and do it again, just so people um, don't get confused by the code. Uh, so that's main graph. That was vol. That's volume. Um, now a three. A3 is, um, well, A3 will actually be the bottom indicator. Um, so A3 equals PLT subplot to grid 6, 4, and the starting point for A3 is 5, 0. Row span is indeed 1, call span 4. And then we're actually, we're going to, uh, let's just copy all of this, paste, and now this right here. Um, is your top indicator and we're gonna call it a zero we have to kind of we have to put it below because all of these are sharing the axes of a which we have not added but we will I guess um, so uh, the starting point here will be a zero zero and the rest stays the same and now let's go ahead and throw in our share X equals a comma so let's go ahead and copy that, paste, paste, and that's all the pasting we have to do. So uh, that's setting up the basically all of the indicators and the subplots if we have a top indicator and a bottom indicator. 
Now, the next question uh, would be, obviously, if um, that would be the most indicators. Um, Elif uh, top indicator uh, is not equal to none, then what? And the reason, how come we can get away with this? So we're only, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to say, because we don't have to say elif top indicator equals none yet bottom indicator, or if top indicator doesn't equal one, none, but bottom indicator does, and then flip flop and I have a bunch of questions. Because that is already covered by, we asked this if statement first for a very good reason. So if this statement isn't true, um, but this statement is true, de facto, it means we have no bottom indicator. So we don't have to worry about that. So the order does matter if, if when it comes to your logic. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. And that's also why we throw an elif statement in there. Anyways, um, so elif top indicator does not equal none. Um, what do we want? Well, we want a fairly similar graph. So let's go ahead and just kind of, well, let's just copy um, and paste. And we know we don't have a bottom indicator anymore, so I'll just delete that. Um, and then now you've got your main uh, main graph. It will basically start in the same position as it always had. Uh, the only difference is it's now going to span four rows, but it will still span um, obviously four columns. Then we've got volume data. Volume is uh, going to start basically one down, so. Five zero and its information otherwise stays I you know exactly the same okay so that it would be when the top indicator is none now we're going to set up um, l if bottom indicator not equal none whoops none and now we basically do the exact same thing only instead of top we have a bottom so let's copy paste change this to we'll go ahead and change that to Th oh, actually, yeah, two, and then we'll call this one. Now I'm, I'm just totally lost. <laughs> that was top indicator, so this would be three. Okay, so this is when there is no top indicator. There is instead only a bottom indicator. So this, our start point, uh, would be zero zero. Okay, everything shifts up basically. So zero zero for the main graph, four zero for this graph. And then this bottom indicator, five, zero. Okay, so that's it for bottom indicator. And then, of course, we could find ourselves that we only have uh, price and volume data. So else, we basically have the this right here. Copy, paste. Um, now this gets to span five rows, and this one, but we'll start it at five. It shifts down. Okay. So that's the setting up of our subplots and the gridding of our subplots to handle um, price, volume, whether or not we have just a top indicator, we have both top indicator and bottom indicator, or whether we just have a bottom indicator. Okay, so now that logic covers all of that, and now we're ready to actually begin pulling the data. And I think what I'll do is I'll uh, have us pulling the data in the next video. So if you have any questions or comments on this video, Please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, the donations, and until next time.